Well, <laughs> I, I, uh, I got new socks, so I, I slide further right now. Oh, and also, hello there. There's a pretty ridiculous amount of pour over brewers out there. Whether you're looking at the older Chemex, whether you're looking at the V60, the W60, the Origami, whatever you want, there is a huge, huge variety of pour over drippers and they pretty much come in like any material or shape or size or filter or whatever you want at this point. It kind of feels like almost every week there's like another one that pops up and it's like, oh, what does this one do? <laughs> but that being said, there's a lot of them, which means a lot of them fit a lot of people's different brewing styles. There are tons of studies about how the shape and the filter and the material impacts your extraction, your overall taste of the coffee when it's finished. People argue that some brewers are better for certain roasts of coffees, while other brewers are better for other roasts of coffees. You can get as technical as you want with it, but moral of the story is there's kind of something to fit every single person's need. Personally, I really like the W60. I also really like the Origami Dripper. I think both of them are really nice pour over tools. I think the Origami is stunning. I mean, we can just talk about aesthetics with the Origami. It comes in beautiful colors and shapes and it's great. That being said, I frequently find myself thinking that there's kind of nothing new under the sun. You know, like there's a ton of different drippers out there and it's kind of all been done. In my ever going search of the internet to find interesting coffee things that like fascinate me, I found a brewer that caught my eye. One that was very different from anything I've seen in the past and I got it as one does. So I think we should look at it today because I think it is probably one of the, I'll say weirdest coffee brewers that I've ever purchased. You might be looking at me and you might say that, Morgan, you just pulled a wood block out of that box. I would say yes, but I also pulled a coffee brewer out of this box. This is the Canadiano right here. Now, this is an all wood coffee brewer. This right here is made out of sealed cherry. It's entirely just out of a block of wood, except for the metal filter that you have here in the center. Now, although what I have here in my hand is their cherry wood, uh, this is a finished cherry. They do have several other different types of wood. My inclination is to say flavor. It's, it's not a flavor. They have different types of wood makes. They have ash. They also have walnut. The idea being that you would pair the type of wood brewer you're using to the type of coffee that you traditionally like to drink. They recommended for people who like maybe slightly lighter roasts, a little bit more like citrusy, like little tangier coffees to get the cherry wood. So that's what we have here today. Besides that, it's pretty simple. You have your kind of your bowl, your chamber here that you'll place your dry coffee. You have your filter here, a very fine metal filter. And then that's kind of it. Underneath you have your, your points where your coffee is going to drip out of once it's brewed through. And this is the thing, this does not come apart in any way. This is just what it is. Now, this does bring something really interesting to the table that a lot of other brewers uh, specifically avoid. And that is the fact that this brewer is made to kind of impart part of itself into the coffee as you continue to brew with it. Because obviously this is wood, this is porous. Uh, this is not like a ceramic or a metal filter, which you are very easily able to clean and just like, there's no coffee residue, there's nothing. It's just, that's it. However, with the Canadiano, the idea is that you're essentially seasoning your brewer every time you brew with it. Because of course the oils of the coffee, the water, Water, everything is gonna kind of become part of the brewer itself. So as you continue brewing with it, as those layers continue to build up, you're gonna be imparting, in theory, in theory here, kind of that continued like deeper coffee flavor, some sort of like woody, like nutty essence to your drink. That's the idea, at least. That's kind of like the, that's the, that's the setup for all of this. So I'd like to try it. We do need to season it. We have a lot of things to do here today. And I'd also like to compare it to a more traditionally brewed cup of coffee in like a ceramic brewer, like the W60. So while I get started, uh, seasoning <laughs> my coffee brewer. I do want to give a massive thank you to the, the very amazing uh, sponsor of today's video, who is Ghirardelli. I want to give a huge thank you to Ghirardelli for sponsoring today's video. In my home, it's pretty much a necessity that I have Ghirardelli syrup stock to keep my daily drinks interesting, but recently I've been in the mood to get festive because, well, it is the season. With Ghirardelli's peppermint hot cocoa mix and their dark chocolate and cocoa powder, I found myself making quick and delicious peppermint mochas on the regular. Now, my go-to recipe has been 30 36 grams of peppermint hot cocoa mix, a double shot of espresso, it doesn't matter what roast, whatever you like right now, eight ounces of steamed oat milk, and a heavy sprinkle of dark chocolate and cocoa powder on top just to cut the sweetness a little bit. I've always loved using Ghirardelli products at home as a way to elevate my usual drinks, and you can too. They have a wide array of premium products to fit whatever flavor profiles you might enjoy. Let me know what your favorite Ghirardelli holiday drink is, or if you've tried my favorite peppermint mocha recipe, which by the way, I'll have written in the description below. And in the meantime, you can learn more about Ghirardelli and the products featured here by clicking the link in the description. Thank you again to Ghirardelli for sponsoring today's video. 
Welcome back from that chocolatey goodness. I've got our water just about ready. I have our coffee ground, but before we're able to actually start brewing a cup of coffee, we need to prep this. Now, they sent a helpful little instruction card here. So let's take a peek at it and let me give you the overview of the steps we have to take. Number one, being wash your Canadiano thoroughly with soap and warm water before its first use. Now, this is because, and it's gonna be a little bit tricky to see, but there are actually little grains of sawdust that I can still see in here that we'll wanna get rid of because as much as we want that kind of like woodiness to impart into our coffee, I don't think we want actual grains of sawdust in our coffee. The next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna kinda do like a like a dry brew. Like we're gonna pretend like we're brewing our coffee to drink. Uh, we're gonna put in the usual amount. We're gonna get everything stirred, add our hot water, do all of that, and then we're just gonna kinda dump it out. This is gonna be kind of our first seasoning cup of coffee. This is just to, again, make sure any of that extra residue that we don't want, any of that sawdust that we don't want that might be stuck in the filter or somewhere that I can't reach with just like running water will be knocked out before we brew the cup of coffee that we're then going to drink. So we've got some steps. Let me go rinse this with hot soapy water. I will be right back. Now let's get our first kind of test, test brew done. To start off, I'm gonna treat this like I would any other dripper. So I have got about 20 grams of a medium to medium coarsely ground coffee. Put that in there. And then it's time to start brewing. From what I can see so far, with 20 grams of coffee added, this entire like brewing area up top seems to be able to hold about 100 grams of water as well. Now, I got out a spoon because we're, we're a little bit ways into this. Um, I have about 100 more grams of water to add to this brew before it's completed, but already I am noticing that our, our drip down here is a lot slower than I would generally want it to be. I went back and I checked our instructions um, and they recommend regularly agitating your coffee all the way through the brew. Now, I don't usually agitate uh, in my pour over brews. However, it is, it's it's a not an uncommon thing. So I've got a spoon and we're just gonna very slowly stir just to make sure we keep some nice movement and that all that water can flow through the bed of coffee and also the filter. All right, our initial seasoning brew has completed. We have what appears to be coffee here, which is great. That is always a plus when it looks like coffee at the least. So I am gonna go clean all of this up and then let's brew something to drink. Now I will say the cleanup of the Canadiano uh, is, is about as simple as any other brewer. You can't put this in the dishwasher. However, all I had to do was just dump my grounds into the compost and then I was able to just rinse the rest of it clean. I'm drying it now and we'll be good to go. So again, 20 grams of medium to medium coarsely ground coffee. In you go. I have something prepared for agitation as if I'm not agitating enough as is. And now the coffee gods willing, we're ready to brew. It is kind of a, a game to be able to add all of your water um, in the time that I usually would without overflowing like the edges of this. Cause this is, this would very easily just kind of like dribble off the side. I'm doing my best right now not to scrape the sides or the filter. I merely want to get those grounds moving a little bit. Well, our brew is about complete. I have some thoughts, but let's taste it first. Good news is it looks like coffee. It smells a little bit like Lincoln Logs. Did anyone play with those as a kid? Like you remember like kind of just like you stack them, you build little cabins and it's, it's all like hands-on like fun stuff. This, this smells like an open tin of Lincoln Logs a little bit. Quite interesting smell. Let's see if the taste lines up with it. Interesting. I have to go back for seconds. The mouthfeel is really the first thing you encounter. This has got a very, very thick body to it. It does feel a little bit like a, an immersion brew or like a French press. You get a little bit of like bite to it. Like it's a little bit chewy in the mouth. You don't necessarily taste like any sort of like heavy grains of coffee. You're not necessarily getting like chunks of anything. <laughs> Pardon that word, poor choice of words, but it's a very, very heavy bodied coffee, um, which I brew this coffee a lot. This is not usually a super heavy bodied coffee. Flavor wise, it's definitely changed. This is a light roast coffee. This is a single origin from Burundi. This is generally a pretty citrus heavy coffee. I would describe this as having a lot of like, kind of like lemon peel in it. But right now it is just, it is a dense, it's a dense coffee. What I'm tasting in there is kind of like a little bit of like smokiness and it, it does taste woody for lack of a better term. Like I, I think that really is just the flavor that I'm getting out of it. It's like a little bit vegetal maybe as well. Breaking out all the big words today. 
the most off-putting thing about it, and not necessarily in a bad way, but just kind of in the most shocking way, is that really thick mouth feel. <laughs> like I would, I would really expect this out of a French press. I think that's the most comparable like textural experience I can think of. I, I wouldn't expect this from like a manual pour over really of any sort. Flavors of the coffee aside though, I, I do want to talk about a couple things of like the brewing process and the shape because eh, issues. So we have our Canadiano here. And then I also have this conical brewer. This is the Hario W60. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit of a spin on the V60, but all in all, it's a, it's a pretty standard conical brewer uses a paper filter, you probably recognize it. When we look at the shape of these two, they're kind of the exact opposite. With the Canadiano, you have your metal filter, but instead of the conical metal filter pointing downwards, I'm kind of catching all that downwards momentum, bringing all your water down, you actually have it facing upwards, which is kind of interesting. And it, it created a problem in the brew because when you look at something like the Hario W60 or any sort of like a conical filter, everything is pointing down. All the water momentum, all the everything is pushing down through the coffee, through the filter and dripping out the end. This allows your brew to move pretty quickly, which is what you want. You don't want a super long brew with your pour over. You start to risk over extraction then and like all, all of those sorts of sciencey things. However, this brew with the Canadiano took quite a while. This was like upwards of five minutes, I would say, which is which is much longer than I would, I would traditionally want to ever brew a coffee for. And my theory of that is because of the shape of this cone filter. I think because it is facing upwards, I think there's a lot less access for the water to just kind of flow smoothly through it. Something I also noticed even when I was agitating is that you start to get like your coffee, your grounds that are sitting there brewing, they start to build up kind of in this edge along the, the bottom of the filter. So they get kind of all packed in there, which then blocks off your water from draining through any of these holes really. So you're just left with like water flow points up at the top. And if you're starting to get near the end of your brew, if your water is starting to sink lower than the tip of this filter, your water isn't gonna flow through. It's just gonna sit there kind of gathering like a little moat <laughs> around your filter. Now we were able to mitigate that a little bit by agitating constantly throughout the brew, but I wouldn't describe that as being like the ideal brew process. All of that being said, I do wanna brew side by side with these two brewers though, because I think what I'm gonna call the clogging issue is gonna be demonstrated a lot better if you can see a more like classical pour over being brewed at the same time next to it. More coffee, yay! <laughs> so I have got identical amounts of ground coffee here for our two brews. Something I will mention here at the front end though that you can't do with the Canadiano like you would a traditional brewer is that you're not really able to preheat this. Frequently people alongside wetting their filter and you know getting out any of those impurities, people will like to kind of heat up their brewer prior to brewing so you lose less heat as the brew happens. It's not really possible with the wood like you can run water through beforehand, but it's not gonna maintain heat the same way, let's say like ceramic or metal is going to. But anyways, coffee in. So I made the realization as well that I only have one scale that I use for coffee brewing, like a normal person, I suppose. But I'm going to do these brews side by side. They are going to be the exact same. However, I will be swapping um, my scale between them. However, I know the end grams that I am looking for. I also know the weight of each of my pours that I'm going to be adding. So this will work. It'll just look a little bit wonky on your side. <laughs> Then we come back over to the Canadiano. And at this point, our filter has started to kind of clog up, so it is time to agitate. <laughs> Just be as annoying as possible to it. That took a lot of skill. <laughs> That was like patting my head and rubbing my tummy at the same time. Now that pour right there was the final amount of water I wanna add to my W60. So that can sit, that's just gonna finish brewing and draining and we have to go back over here to our Canadiano because we have not finished adding our water yet. Now, kind of the obvious solution to something like this, um, when your brew is just taking way too long to pass through the coffee and everything, is the, the instinct is to often grind uh, coarser. Frequently, if you are grinding too fine, your brew will take too long for the water to travel through everything and extract, and that could be a very simple solution. However, here, because of the shape of this filter, I am far more inclined to say this is an issue with that shape rather than my coffee being you know, too fine. I have also, for the most part, ground this very much 
on the coarser end of what I would use in a pour over like this and in a metal filter like this. And I don't really want to go any more coarse than I have. Regardless though, I think we are about done with this. So let me get rid of our brewers. Let's look at these side by side. So we have here two very similar looking brews. Let's taste them side by side. As a lot of you probably know if you've made a pour over before, when you use a paper filter, you do get a very clean cup of coffee. This is, this is a very light bodied coffee. Um, it's really nice and like kind of a little bit tangy. You've got a lot of that lemon peel that I mentioned earlier. Um, you get a lot of like clarity in all the notes. Like it is a, it's a standard cup of like nice coffee, I would say. Now, moving over to the Canadiano. It does change the coffee. It changes the coffee quite a bit. We already discussed that like kind of like chewy body that it gives it and that, that is still true here with the second brew. Flavor wise though, when comparing them side to side, it is kind of impressive to taste the difference. I would describe the Canadiano brew as being a little bit more muted. Again, it softens a lot of those really bright flavors. It brings them down into something that is more overall just like one homogenous flavor. You don't necessarily get that journey of kind of like, oh, it's like a little bit brighter on the front and then you get like some lemon in the middle and ooh, you have like sweetness on the end. It's a chewy coffee uh, that is overall, you have that external flavor of like kind of like woodiness to it, but overall the flavor notes in there are just kind of like brought down to a, to a little bit of like a more darker like palette. It's not always how I would like to drink my coffee, but it's not necessarily a bad cup of coffee. I think the main like detractor to it is going to be like the body and like the mouthfeel texture of it. And to show you really what I mean, um, I am going to dump both of these coffees. You're able to see the amount of like fines and residue that's gonna be sitting at the bottom of both of them. Okay, so all I have done here is just dump out uh, the top of the coffee, just so we're able to see what is sitting at the bottom, what is like settled all the way through the coffee, what's been left over, what's like, what fines have made its way through the filter. So in our paper filter, the W60, you can see it's it's really clear. You, you don't really have any leftovers. That is what I would consider a very clean cup of coffee. However, when you get over here, you can see all of those fines, all of that kind of like sediment, all of those like little tiny bits of coffee that have made their way through those tiny holes of your metal filter. Compare it to this, again, very clear. There is, you know, you can see through the light, there's not really anything there. Whereas this is what's giving your coffee that very chewy, very like mouthy texture. And it's also very, very similar to what you might see at the bottom of the cup if you were brewing a French press and you didn't like sift out the fines of your coffee, which I would not say is a normal thing for people to do. Like sifting your coffee grounds before you brew is a little bit more of a labor intensive process that I would not recommend that anyone has to or like needs to go through. Okay, hold up everyone, hold, hang on, hang here a second. So I was just wiping this out uh, because I was gonna give my final thoughts on this. This I set down in my sink. It was not sitting in water. All that was left was the grounds in it for just like, like maybe five minutes uh, while I was discussing those cups of coffee. Something changed, something happened. We have developed, I don't know if you can see them. Uh, there are now two cracks on either side of the Canadiano brewer, which is a little bit alarming. I'll be, I'll be totally honest. I don't right know what to do here. I just poked around online for a second. Apparently it is more normal for wood to kind of like stretch and crack as you continue brewing in it. But walking over and seeing two large cracks on either side of my brewer, <laughs> So frankly, frankly, a little bit alarming. So let me give you my final thoughts. I think the main takeaway of this brewer is that it was very much made with a design focus in mind. Aesthetically, I really like this brewer. I think it's gorgeous. I think the wood finish is very, very pretty. I, I like the unusual shape of it appearance wise. I, I think it's very pretty. However, in practice, as a pour over brewer, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we talked a lot about the issues and I think we saw a lot of them in play today. From this conical filter pointing upwards, creating this area, this kind of like moat that all your coffee grounds will settle in, requiring constant agitation if you want to brew in any sort of reasonable time, and also leaving you with a cup that is not very clean, even with a very coarsely ground, uh, you know, starter dry coffee. Now, there is kind of a, a secondary element to all of this, that being the kind of the imparting, the buildup of the oils, the, the everything else into your coffee over time. That's not something that you can do in like one day's worth of brewing. That's something that is going to probably take a couple of weeks. And in fact, they do mention on their website that over your weeks of brewing, you will start to see this like growth and development and like maturation of your coffee, which is, <laughs> it sounds really fun, but I think this is something I'm going to have to continue brewing with to see if that happens. There might be like some sort of follow-up video in the distant future where I talk about how I've seen this develop over time. But besides that, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting idea 
idea, I just think the execution of it from a coffee perspective is a little bit lacking. That being said though, I do think it is very, very beautiful. And I think it was fun to try because it's something interesting and different and I don't know, I think we had a good time. The cracks do disturb me. <laughs> I will say that much. These cracks are very concerning, but we will just pretend that that's what it's supposed to do and that it's completely fine and we will ignore it like I do with most life things. So with that being said, this was my test and review of the Canadiano Brewer. There might be a follow-up at some point or there might not if I lose all motivation and this starts to go in a drawer or to a friend or something. Anywho, I hope this was fun for you. I hope this was mildly educational in some way. And that's it for today. I'm Morgan Drinks Coffee on all the platforms that I am active on. We just launched new merch last week. Very exciting. The Coffee Plant series is now live and it will be linked in the description below. If you would like to learn any more about Ghirardelli who are fantastic and delicious and wonderful, that will also be linked below. And yeah, you can find me on Instagram and TikTok almost every single day. I'm here on YouTube once a week, plus lots of shorts throughout the week. And that's it. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>